Uh, this is a full circle moment uh, for Vice President Harris and Obama, 20 yeah. years in the making, as you say. They've crossed paths, they've helped each other out many times over the years. Harris knocked on doors for uh, Obama in Iowa in 2008. Now, of course, he is in charge of rallying Democrats behind her. Yeah, I believe it was New Year's Eve of that year when she went to, to Iowa. It was her first time there, and she was knocking on doors, part of his very small campaign at the time, long before he had, had won in any of the, the caucuses and the primaries. But that was notable at the time, Jake. You know, looking back on it now, as history paints it, obviously it's not a surprise, but at the time, a lot of the Democratic heavyweights were putting their weight behind Hillary Clinton. She had the all-powerful endorser of her husband, former President Bill Clinton, in that race. So it was notable that Harris essentially kind of crossed that line and was supporting Obama in that race, something that he clearly did not forget. He ended up helping her get elected in her races as AG and as the, as U.S. Senator in California. And so certainly you've seen that relationship go back and forward when it comes to, to paying those favors back. But tonight uh, essentially was the ultimate version of that, Jake, when he gets on stage here tonight and makes the case for her. We've seen this happen with presidents in the past. Remember, former President Bill Clinton came out in 2012 and made a 52-minute argument for re-electing Obama that was seen as really helping that convention. We'll be seeing Obama do that for Harris tonight. I will note, Jake, just as we're seeing the delegates and media get inside here in the United Center tonight, there is something new on the chairs. There are these bracelets. Anyone who's been to a Taylor Swift concert has seen a version of this, maybe not marked with the DNC's logo, uh, but these bracelets that light up. Last night, it was kind of amazing to watch how quickly they were changing the signs with the message that they wanted out there. Obviously, it went from Jill Biden to unions to we love Joe. Tonight, we see these bracelets on the chairs as we'll be watching to see how the programming aspect of tonight looks when night two of the Democratic convention gets kicked off. Jake. Yeah, that's right. Old man Tapper saw those for the first time in Philly. Uh, when, when Harris and Walls <laughs> came out, I had no idea what they were, but they all changed colors at the same time. It's pretty cool, and my Swifty uh, friends and relatives were quick to tell me this was not exactly You're not, old man, not, Jake, not exactly a newfangled technology. Caitlin, thanks so much. <laughs> well, you'll be back with more shortly. Let's bring in my uh, panel of political experts to weigh in all the stories happening here and outside uh, the convention hall. Um, Alyssa, I want to start with the fact uh, that we are going to hear from Stephanie Grisham former colleague of yours this evening. She was uh, the Trump White House press secretary, communications director, chief of staff for Melania Trump. She's going to be talking here at the Democratic Convention along with a number of other uh, Republicans. You are not doing that. You, you are a Republican not voting for Trump. What, what do you make of it all? So listen, the Harris campaign has reached out to a lot of prominent Republicans, Adam Kinzinger, former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan. Stephanie Grisham is a fascinating one to me. She is a friend and colleague, former colleague of mine. She was a diehard Trump true believer. She was on the 2016 campaign. She was in the thick of it, close to the family. But she resigned after January 6th. She couldn't stand by it. And since then, she's kept a very quiet life, lives in Kansas, has an animal sanctuary. This isn't something she necessarily, I think, wanted to do, but she's got two young sons. She says she cares about the future of the country. And she thinks it's her duty as someone who has so much insight into that world to talk about the character of Trump and why she believes he's unfit for office. Significant. They are really reaching out to Republicans, I've got to say. Yeah. Uh, David Urban, do you think this has any uh, impact? Zero. Zero, really? <laughs> Zero impact. Tell me what voter... Uh, uh, listen, I, I, if you're a, if you're a, a Trump hater... In uh, Montgomery County, these folks don't matter to you. They're not going to matter to you. Half of America doesn't even know who they are. Well, what about the what, what are called the double haters, the yeah, people that don't like Kamala I, I, and don't I, like uh, I, 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 Trump? I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if disgruntled former employees or disgruntled members of the it's party. It's not that, though. Yeah, it, it's Nikki Haley voters. And by the way, yeah. women. There are so many women who are lifelong Republicans in the suburbs, college educated, who saw January 6th yeah. and it was a bridge I, too far, and they're I, looking for I, a yep. permission structure and an offer, even if they don't like Kamala Harris. Yeah, I, I, I'm not but so sure. I'm are not already sure. gone. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, no, I, I think that those people are gone. I don't think you're getting a lot of those people back. Like the Nikki Haley voters, the people who voted Nikki Haley, they're never voting for Donald Trump ever. We're not going to get those people back, right? So I don't know. You really oh, think, so that's going to be really tough. Think? I, I don't think you're getting them back. No, what do you, I think, what do you I think, think? we get some Republicans, but not <laughs> well, those. You know, well, let me ask you. I, mean, I you're, think you're this is fascinating TV. <laughs> no, but, but you're a South Carolina Democrat, but you have Republican friends. You sure. work across the aisle. Um, do you think that, the, do you buy what Alyssa's saying about a permission structure? Adam Kinzinger, conservative Republican, uh, flies in the Air Force, National Guard, et cetera. Yes, I think, he I comes think, uh, out and he says, 
I'm, I can't vote for Trump. I think a lot of it is a permission structure, and that's a great way to look at it. A lot of the Republican outreach that you're seeing, you saw the mayors of border cities uh, who are Republican in Arizona who are coming out and supporting Kamala Harris. And the reason I disagree with David Urban is because this race is going to be extremely close. Absolutely. And so that number's not zero. No, no, no. That, I'm, I'm saying I don't have that, to that, I, What I, I'm I, saying I, is I, that I, in a marginal race, these marginal voters do matter. And even in the state of Georgia, that number is not marginal. It's over 100,000 people who did not vote for, I mean, for Donald I, Trump. Jeff, me, Jeff Duncan is a very popular guy in Georgia. He may be helpful in the state of Georgia, okay. 100%, right? Okay. Um, the, the other people, I don't, you know, they're not going to matter. They, the people in Pennsylvania, they don't know who these people are. They don't care. They're relevant. But I, well, Jeff I mean, Duncan may have an impact. But, but there are just, I want to break, because yeah. Trump, uh, if we could punch up, yeah, three. Yesterday, former President uh, Trump continued to take uh, level some very personal attacks on Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, although he's still, by the way, out there today attacking Joe Biden. Um, it's pretty clear that he, he longs for Biden in many ways. But anyway, take a listen to him going after Harris. Kamala has no idea what the hell she's doing. Her father is a Marxist professor, and I believe he taught her well. I wonder if they knew that when they did an overthrow or a coup on Joe Biden. I wonder if they knew where she comes from, where she came from, what her ideology is. What do you think? Is I mean, he's still struggling to come out uh, and, and find an effective way yeah, that, to go after that, her. That, to me, still reads as somebody who is flailing a little bit. Like, he is still searching, because just throwing the insults, I don't think, I, I, I truly don't think this whole communism thing is going to land, A, because it's not true, it, it's not where, what, where she is, and B, it takes him off of sort of his economic, immigration, crime argument, which is where all of his advisors would like him to be. But I will just say, I want, I, we have to say that last bit there. This was not a coup. Right. This was not a coup. This was a ton of pressure applied to Joe Biden to get out of this race because Democrats thought he was going to sink their party's chances in November, and he heeded that call. So one other thing I want to bring up, um, uh, Vice President Harris's running mate, Tim Walls, is set to take the stage tomorrow night. The campaign is having to clean up some comments he's made about one of the campaign signature issues uh, having to do with reproductive rights. Um, this is what Governor Waltz said on MSNBC while criticizing J.D. Vance. Take a listen. J.D. Vance knows nothing about that. And then he keeps going into all of these things. Today's IVF day. Thank God for IVF. My wife and I have two beautiful children. Now, it's, that's not accurate, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, he... It wasn't wow. IVF. Uh, it was a different procedure. And his wife, Gwen Walls, the first lady of Minnesota, is taking care to tell CNN that they actually used a procedure called intrauterine insemination. I IUI. 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 It's a process she described as an incredibly personal, difficult experience. They did use fertility treatments. It wasn't IVF. Any woman Come who's here, gone Sergeant through, Major. I'm, I'm Sergeant sorry. Major. Hold, woman, on, hold on. I want to. Any one of the one in seven women who goes through fertility treatments, IUI is part of the suite of fertility treatments. It's a step below IVF. It's direct insemination versus creating embryos. I think that is a stretch to say that it's not part of the broader fertility treatment. The, the, the way they explain it is, he just talks like how regular people talk. I mean, my husband wouldn't know would the difference. First of all, my wife did IUI not once but twice, and then we did IVF yeah. not once but twice trying to have a child. And so as a father of IVF babies or whatever, yes, I would call. I mean, you're not winning if you're making yeah, that. You would what? You would say it's the same thing? I would just, yeah, as a man, I would probably mess that up. But guys, you this is a head scratcher yeah, but why politically, clean, but why right? clean it up? It's just, it, it, just have your facts right as you come out and you're going to tell the story. That I, It just, it, it opens up an opportunity well, for them to now have to, you know, try and bury it, clean to, up in the their most convention week but, in the line. But we but, will have this discussion with J.D. Vance and Donald Trump any day of the week. We, I mean, I, I get it. It was inartful. It was not, it was not accurate. It was not accurate. It, it was not accurate. Well, the would. distinction is IVF is not, or IUI is not under attack anywhere the way IVF exactly. is, but it is start, part of the suite of options. Most people begin with one and go to the Correct. other. We're glad that he has two kids. It's also important for politicians to be accurate. Uh, thanks to everyone.